So I'm going to be talking about probabilistic safety for Bayesian neural networks. I'm going to be I'm going to start by trying to motivate exactly why we might care about BNNs, and then I'll go over how we uh, compute probabilistic safety for them. So a BNN is uh, or Bayesian neural networks in general are kind of intrinsically linked to safety in that they're neural networks which are able to express uncertainty about their output. So given that a BNN has an input of a kind that it's never seen before, it's able to express that it's uncertain about the decision that it's making in that case. And this has been shown to be quite useful in recent uh, case studies which show that a BNN controlling an autonomous car can use uncertainty about its situation to stop and, for example, avoid a high percentage of collisions. So in this work, we care about checking the safety of a BNN. And how we model that is as uh, uh, the safety of a BNN is its worst case sensitivity to perturbation. So if we allow our input to be perturbed, for example, by plus or minus epsilon, so for every feature dimension of the BNN, uh, an adversary can change uh, the magnitude by either plus or minus uh, some value epsilon. And given any input in this set, we'd like for the uh, Bayesian neural network function to be insensitive. So we'd like for it to satisfy some sensitivity criteria or be mapped to some safe set S. Um, and the reason that we uh, model this safe set as a linear combination of outputs is simply so that we can uh, capture both the regression and classification case under one model. So for regression, you may care about the magnitude of a change, whereas for the classification case, you may just care that the classification stays the same. So now that we've covered safety, I'll go over a little bit about what a Bayesian neural network is. So a Bayesian neural network is simply a neural network with a continuous probability distribution over its weights. And the important part about this is that a distribution over weights induces a distribution over functions, which in turn means that for our outputs, we have a distribution over them. So because we have a distribution over outputs, we kind of have to change our standard notion of safety. Uh, to one that's probabilistic. So here we have the standard notion of safety so that for every x inside of the allowed uh, set of manipulations, we want that the function maps into the safe set. Uh, but because this function is no longer deterministic, we have some probability that this holds rather than it being binary and holding or not. Um, so a, a simple way to kind of illustrate how we might go about computing this is by assuming that we have some safe set of weights h and that we know it. Um, and if we, uh, to give an example of this, let's assume that our neural network function is simply the product of an input dimension by a, a simple weight. And so then let's say we have the property that we want the, uh, for any input between one and two, we want the output of this function to be between one and five. And it's quite clear that the safe weights uh, are between one and two and a half. So what's the probability of this occurring under this probability distribution? Well, simply all, well, all we need to do is to simply integrate over this safe set of weights h, and we get the probability of safety uh, for our entire system. So in general, we don't know h. We won't know a priori the entire set of safe weights. And so an insight into how we might compute a lower bound for this value is that every subset of, uh, of this safe weight interval is itself safe. And to kind of see this, uh, to illustrate this, we have a guess at our safe weight interval, which is conservative, so it's between one and one and a half. And we see that integrating over this space would give a lower bound, a safe lower bound, to the true probability of safety. And so then an algorithm idea is to simply sample a set, uh, an interval of weights to check if that interval of weights is safe, and then to build up a final safe weight interval uh, as a union of these uh, weight intervals. So then the important part is simply checking if, uh, if a weight is safe. And to do this, we uh, extend a set of different uh, tools that are used for deterministic neural networks. But in principle, you can use any tool uh, that you would like for deterministic neural networks. The important part is that you're able to take an interval input space and an interval in output in weight space and compute an interval in output space. And then you know that if this interval in your output space is inside of the safe set, that your interval in weight space is inside of the safe set of weights. And there's a lot more detail, um, and we go over several different algorithms in the paper, and uh, so I'll reference you to those for a more um, expansive uh, explanation. So just to kind of go over exactly how we compute probabilistic safety, um, we have some unknown uh, safe set of weights. And for some iterations, we will uh, sample a weight, pick an interval about that weight, check if it's safe, and continue. 
And at the end, we'll have a, uh, several intervals of safe weights, and we'll merge these safe weights and compute the probability of all of our of the safe weight intervals that we've computed. Um, and this is an important step, and there are several ways you can do this. In the paper, we give an explicit formulation for how to do this if you have a diagonal covariance Gaussian, but in general, you could use a Monte Carlo estimate of this value, and you would be just fine. So we use this uh, at first to verify um, BNN's uh, uh, BNN uh, safety for a vertical collision avoidance system. So the vertical collision avoidance system is a kind of an expansion of the well-known ACASXU data set, which is commonly used in, determinist, in the deterministic safety literature. And basically what we'd like to do is check the actions of um, a drone given uh, its vertical separation to some incoming uh, aerial object. And so we have several properties that we'd like to verify, for example, that the plane doesn't uh, ascend when there's a vehicle above it, and then it doesn't descend when there's a vehicle below it. Um, and we're able to verify with high probability that the BNN is safe in a relatively short amount of time. And remember, this is a lower bound probability, so the BNN is, is probably quite safe in this case. Um, secondly, we study how exactly our, uh, our lower bound estimate is able to scale when we have something that's slightly more uh, high dimensional. So in the previous case, we had an eight dimensional system and for MNIST, we have something that's more like 800 dimensional. And so what we do is we compare our lower bound safety. Um, well, so uh, safety in this case is uh, that the classification of the neural network remains consistent. Uh, so if it's classified as a five, it's remaining, it's remained classified as a five for every possible perturbation of the input. And we check that the lower bound safety, so the probability of our safe weight intervals that we compute is roughly equivalent to the empirical estimate. So an, a, an estimate that's not given in a safe way, but is done simply by sampling the BNN and checking safety by sampling. And we find that our lower bound is within 10% of the empirical estimate. So it gives, uh, it's, it's not an unreasonable lower bound, but it's, it's quite non-trivial um, and that's encouraging. So finally, uh, something, uh, some future directions and conclusions. So in this work, uh, we provide a framework for computing safe lower bounds on the uh, probabilistic safety of BNNs. Um, and we show how it can be used to verify safety critical systems. In future works, we'd like to kind of, we'd like to uh, expand the systems that we look at and verify, um, you know, more intense properties of systems that will be in use. And we'd like to use this lower bounding tool to understand the key factors that contribute and ultimately improve uh, BNN safety.